Okay, welcome to the Arcade Veteran. Today we're going to be looking at an install uh, on the original Xbox. It's uh, a modification, a HDMI modification, made by MakeHertz, and it's an uh, install and review. This is the uh, board that you get. Um, as you can see, different solder points. Um, here's the features. Um, obviously goes right up 1080. Um, crystal clear image is the goal. Got to look at your Xbox version first because there are two different versions to buy of this of this uh, device. So you need to identify what motherboard you've got. Uh, I'm using a 1.1. Here's my 1.1. It's a uh, 128 meg upgraded RAM, so it can take the Achero uh, ROMs. Uh, obviously, it says there about preparation of making sure your uh, motherboard is acceptable for the type you've bought. This is a prerequisite. You have to flash your BIOS with a patched version so that it uh, gets rid of any anomalies. So you have to look at what um, BIOS you're running. I'm running an Indie BIOS. Um, so you've got to look at that BIOS and then patch it and then inject it into, into uh, a mod chip is the preferred method. Um, I'm a fairly seasoned Xbox modder, so I've um, decided to flash the onboard TSOP um, with the patch rather than mess around. These are um, some bridging points you need to solder in first uh, just to enable the Xbox to detect your. it's got a HD, basically a HD cable on the back. Uh, they're the pins you, you bridge just to, just to fool the Xbox into thinking you've got a HD cable in there. Um, this is probably the hardest part of the install is um, this flex cable. Um, not as difficult as the PS1 digital, there's a lot more flex cables but but hard enough um, as you can see you've got to be very careful just to make sure you've counted the pins and that you, the pins are all in the right places uh, so that uh, you don't mess it up because once you've been you know, tacking it in gently first check where you are and then obviously you can um, solder it in properly once you've ascertained that everything's in the right place when you are installing this you need to refer to the uh, online documentation it's probably best to have that in the background where you can quickly look at the pin layout on the pictures provided they do give them um, some quite nice and detailed pictures on their website so um, I use that to basically help me ascertain exactly how many pins in from the edge that the flex cable started and tack it in place double check and obviously then it's, it's a go from there so uh, the method of uh, soldering a flex cable is minimal amount of heat, minimal amount of solder, and you don't want to overheat the flex cable and melt it. So you normally set your iron to 320, 340 at the most really. Um, and then it's it's not really a drag method, you tend to do a swiping action where you um, apply plenty of flux and you then use the solder that's actually on the chip's pins. In the instructions, it does tell you to pre-tin the pins on the flex cable, uh, and I did try it both ways. I did try it dry, and I did try it pre-tin. And I must admit, they are right. I think um, pre-tin the pins very gently um, is the way to go. It does give you that little bit. It's not something you've got to mess around putting um, some extra solder onto the end of your tip. Um, you know, you're trying to feed it in that way. Using a pre-tin um, approach did help me. Uh, make the process a lot easier so here I am basically making sure everything's in the right position everything's tacked down and uh, in the right places so uh, that's all good so just giving it a clean with uh, isopropyl alcohol just, uh, what you're seeing there is me having a look under a I've got a um, magnifying glass there I'm trying it's very difficult to do this under a um, under a camera to this sort of work. So here's the, obviously the other connections, so we'll let this play out and watch what's going on. Once I've finished putting on the uh, flex cable, obviously I'm just going over with a uh, microscope microscope but it does the job. Let me have a close look, see if we've got any bridge pins. Just make sure everything's nice and 
Looks nice and shiny, I haven't got any dull connections. You know, a dull connection usually could be a sign of a dry joint, so you, you do want them quite nice and shiny. Um, the only thing that's really good doing with now is a good clean. Um, there's quite a bit of residual flux, even though I, I use quick, um, you know, quick flux. Um, so, uh, the auxiliary wires and other bits and bobs that need to be done. I tend to do the flex cable first, just purely and simply because it's the, it's the big hard bit out of the way. I don't want to spend hours, you know, soldering in all these other connections and then balls up the flex cable and then the, 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 the console scrap. So I tend to do the horrible bit first. Uh, even the instructions don't really tell you to do it that way. Um, the easy stuff I leave obviously till la till later. So this is a ferrite bead that the instructions informs you to uh, remove. So uh, take that out. And there's a resistor change. You've got to change one of the resistors to a 470 ohm resistor to enable the installation to work. Give me a bit of a clean up. There you go. So I'm just trying to get in the camera, get the camera in a position where you can see the actual position of the resistor. There you go, just there. It's a 470 ohm resistor. That's all good. That's pretty much the horrible bit out of the way. These are just um, screenshots from the website. These are a couple of uh, connections that go to the original AV out. There's five volts on them, and speed it. But they have to be orientated in a specific way because they go underneath the board. But again, the instructions tell you how to do it. Box in the original casing. I've done that. There's one screw actually under the Xbox HDMI, so that's why they ask you to put it back in first and put that screw back in. I'm clamping it down. We'll make a note. Um, it's a bit rattly in that, in that, so you have to push push the board to the rear. You can see there's a gap between the actual board and, and the silver backing. I noticed that after I've done this, so slap those screws off and just gently push the board towards the back of the console and it just that, that gap disappears then and it's all nice and snug fit. It does ask you to pre-tin the board, which I do I agree with, you know it um, it does make life a bit easier pre-tinning stuff before you start. So I'm just soldering on these uh, wire connections that I've uh, done underneath. The thing when you're modding, you tend to uh, you want it to be neat because if anybody in the future ever takes it apart, I, I, it's quite, I think a lot of modders in the community tend to have a lot of pride in their work purely and simply because, like you say, if you, ten years time someone takes this to bits and for maintenance or whatever, put, put a bigger hard drive in it or something, um, it's great to see that someone actually took the time and care to do it nice and neat and proper. So I always try to get things you know, nice and neat and uh, looking like they're all, you know, all the wires are in parallel and it all looks nice rather than just chucking it in the Xbox. And, uh, as long as it, you know, some people do look look like that and, and, and do it just to see that it works. But uh, no, I like it. I've got a bit of pride in what I do, so uh, that's why I'm probably taking a little bit longer just to get these wires in a nice neat orientation. This bit's pretty simple wires to pads so I don't think there's any risk of anything going wrong there. Like I say, just uh, bending things into the right places. And needed to fairly be able to change the tip a couple of times and yeah, as you can see there's a slightly bigger tip on this just because the pads do take a lot of the heat away so uh, I think a little slight little bit of a slightly bigger tip does give you the um, a little bit of storage of heat in the actual iron so that it doesn't run out of run out of puff and then you get a dry joint and now we're uh, this was quite fiddly there's not a lot of room it almost feels like some you might have connected it before you fitted the board but I suppose there's things it, it did go in all right really I you know, it's me saying I would have done it differently but probably not it is it wasn't it was a few seconds work putting this rip this cable in Nice. Yep, I'll just 
good. Really pleased with that. <coughs> Pretty much it. That's the install. Pretty much done. Just reassembling the Xbox, and it's test time. Here we go. Test pattern's all been displayed, so she's working all okay, which is great. Test completed successfully. It's in the BIOS flash screen. go yeah unleash X dashboard let's get straight into it let's go down to a game bit of outrun too can't get much better than that what a showcase for this system you know almost arcade perfect you know, absolutely fantastic game when you compare the hero game the beta version that you can play an 128 meg Xbox you know this game isn't isn't far behind it. The car detail is not quite as good, but you know the traps and the side detail absolutely brilliant. Couldn't uh, couldn't praise this conversion enough. It's a real shame that it's never come to uh, a later console. Really, it's, it'd be surprised what they could do with it now. But it could it would be literally arcade perfect. So uh, absolutely brilliant bit of kit. There's the back of the console with the X HDMI port there. Very very neat. Very well done. Okay, so my opinion on the kit, um, from a hardware perspective, um, I don't think it's, it's not overpriced, I think it's the right money, um, I think the kit is extremely well made, I think it does everything it needs to do, um, it's brilliant in, in what it actually does, um, the installation's a little bit tough, I'd say it's probably on par or slightly easier than the PS1 Digital, um, but still a challenging mod to do. Um, more so, not from a, um, a mechanical, you know, as in soldering the, the board in and, and that sort of stuff. It's the setup and the there's getting you know getting the software and the BIOS, the things set up before you start, uh, you know, finding out what the vision of Xbox you are, flashing your BIOS, injecting that either using a, you know a CD and um, loading the BIOS in separately there, and then flashing it through the through a CD like Hexen or something like that onto a onto your mod chip. Um, or like, <clears throat> like myself, where I've flashed it directly, you know, um, t directly to the T-SOP and, and not bothered with the mod chip. Um, whichever one you use, it's, it's the same sort of procedure. I found flashing it the T-SOP easier, really, than actually going through all the, the setup on a CD and actually having to install a mod chip. You know, my Xbox, like I say, I T-SOP modded it, so I didn't need a mod chip. Um, so it was easier for me in this instance just to carry on with that. But I would recommend. It's, it's, if you brick a mod chip, you can replace it. If you brick a T-SOP, your Xbox is dead. So, you know, it's much less risky to go with the uh, mod chip reflash than, obviously, the T-SOP method, so I do recommend that. I did find the website to be quite um, unusable. I think they really, if I had to make any recommendations, I, I think that uh, they could improve the website and access to the files and, you know, it was a lot of to in and fro in and a lot of up and down and the way they've constructed their their instructions could do with a bit of work you know as a you know someone who's done it before obviously you, you'd know this you know the setup but uh, someone who's this is the first time of installing one i think they could work on their instruction set a lot really to help, help them fit it a lot easier i spent quite a considerable amount of time reading rereading going from page to page um, I emailed their technical help, which was very good. You know, within a, within a day or a couple of days, they'd responded, so I can't complain. They were there if I needed them. Um, but I think if they tidied their website up and put all the files in one place and just kept everything nice and clean, I think they'd have a much more polished product. And um, now that I've done it, I'm over the moon. I would recommend it to anybody. Um, if you're a seasoned modder, then fair enough. But if you're a, if you're a novice, then I think the way they it is at this moment in time. I think it would be better to get someone who's done it before to help or to send it to somebody that's a professional that can obviously do it for you. Um, but, you know, all in all, absolutely brilliant end result. I'm really, really pleased.
was using a pound cable. Uh, we had the HMI converter, the pound HMI converter. And this literally walks all over the signal is absolutely awesome. The audio is beautiful. It connects, connects straight to the TV. You know, this is worth every penny if you've got the patience and the knowledge to do it. I'd like to say, a little bit of clean on the website. I'd give it probably 7 out of 10. I'd clean the website up. I'd give it 10 out of 10. Absolutely no problem. So, hope this helps. Obviously, see you again soon, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.